So my Batman that holds my holds my phone, you're supposed to be able to bend his arm so that it'll hold the phone. But this poor guy. broken. Welcome to Comics with Dan. This is the Comics Commute number six. Uh, we're trying a new camera angle here. Uh, as you saw in the, in the beginning there, my, my little Batman broke his arm. So I uh, got to position him in a different way so that he's He's holding my phone with his other arm instead of his instead of his left arm. So, uh, so this week uh, we'll talk about the the two books on my pull list, which are uh, Transformers number six and No One number eight, uh, both image books, uh, as well as uh, touching on what I've read in the past week, uh, which includes. Uh, I, have, I haven't quite finished it yet, but uh, Jeff John's Green Lantern Volume 2. Uh, I've read the... Um, I, I, I picked up a copy of the uh, the official image timeline that came out last year. Uh, I got found it in a dollar bin, and I also found uh, a copy of Cowl Number 1, a first printing of that, in, um, in the dollar bin, which I thought was a, a great find. And then... I also read I read Void Rivals uh, number seven, uh, which is the start of a new a new arc there, and I read Birds of Prey number seven, and uh, so I think that that's most of it. Uh, so we'll see we'll see where we go from there. So first of all, thanks to everyone who watched the uh, the Night Thrasher profile. Uh, it, it's I, I appreciate all the support. Um, anyone that hasn't seen it, definitely go check it out. Uh, it's you know just a, a character profile on uh, Night Thrasher, the founder of the New Warriors, uh, and uh, it's got some some pretty in depth stuff. Uh, kind of takes you through the details of who Night Thrasher is and uh, sort of some of his key adventures. So uh, if you if you want to check that out ahead of the new uh, number two of the new Night Thrasher series, then you definitely should. So the first item on my pull list is uh, Transformers number six, uh, which this is the this is the end of the first arc. Uh, sadly, it's going to be the last issue that Daniel Warren Johnson's going to uh, do the art for, um, but I think Jorge Corona is going to really pick up uh, where DWJ left off. I think he's going to. I, I think I don't want to say he'll pick up without skipping a beat, but essentially, I, I think that the focus isn't going to be on the change in art. Uh, we'll we'll be able to keep focusing on the great story. Uh, so, so the last we saw, uh, Starscream had revived. I, I thought he was going to revive Megatron. Uh, although I guess it doesn't make a lot of, it wouldn't have made a lot of sense for him to have done that, uh, given the way that he reacts when anyone even tries to bring up Megatron. Uh, so he ended up reviving, uh, I, I, for the life of me, I can't remember what the name of the, the Transformer is. Uh, I'll, in, in true comics commute fashion, I will edit it in, uh, down below right here, right here. So, um, but end up reviving a giant dest destroyer, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, again, we see Optimus Prime being this compassionate, gentle, caring leader who is also willing to fight the fight when he needs to. And he certainly does fight it. Um, we're starting to get a lot more of the characters back. Uh, the, the, it's, it's sort of been a, a slow burn on getting some of the characters we're used to introduced. Uh, and obviously we have Starscream doing his usual war crimes. So uh, I, I'm excited to see how this will conclude. I, I feel like Megatron has to be 
has to be in there. My my understanding is that Megatron was introduced in Cobra Commander number one. And it makes me want to read that because I'm, I'm wondering where he is. So I'm, I may try to find a copy of that. I think they did a second printing of that. So maybe I'll try to try to locate that just so I can see where, where what Megatron's up to. So then my, the next item on my pull list is no one number eight. We're finally getting closer to figuring out who Richard Rowe is and who no one is. Uh, you know, we've, we've got three issues left. Um, this last issue, number seven, it, it, it advanced the story quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, how, I, I, I think that three issues is plenty of time to tell the rest of the story well without rushing it and without it dragging on. I, I think that the, the pacing of this book has felt a little slow just because of release times. But if you look at it from a uh, from the perspective of reading one issue after the other, it, it's it's paced pretty well. I'm really glad that I pulled this in single issues instead of waiting for the trade, just because I think that the monthly format along with the podcast has just been an excellent storytelling form. Off the top of my head, I don't really recall if no one has another really cool Pittsburgh cover for number eight. Uh, it might be for number 10, but uh, I'll put it I'll put it right here if, if there is one. Uh, I got uh, this cover here uh, for, I believe it was number two, uh, where he's standing on top of the, uh, the Duquesne Incline uh, or the Monongahela Incline. I, I, don't, I don't think it's specific to which one, but, um, and, and that's such a cool cover. Uh, there was another one where he's standing uh, on a bridge and uh, you can see the yellow bridge behind him. I wasn't able to get my hands on that one. Uh, but if I find it out in the wild, I'll probably grab it. So I'm also reading, right now I'm reading uh, Jeff John's Green Lantern Volume 2. Uh, I'm going to put a longer review on League of Comic Geeks. Um, I mean, people talk about this run like it's just some incredible groundbreaking stuff and I really just don't know that I see it. Uh, it's not bad by any means. Um, there's a, I just I definitely have some issues with it. Uh, so the first issue that I'm kind of having with Jeff John's run is that the, the main theme is that how seeking redemption for for all the stuff he's done as parallax. And I think that that's not a bad theme in and of itself. It's just that it requires you to have read all of that stuff of him being Parallax before. But people also recommend this run as a great starting point for Green Lantern. And um, uh, it, that none of this stuff really hits for me. And that part of it could be that I just don't feel the magnitude of what he did as Parallax, but I also just don't feel like Johns is really exploring it all that much, which is a little strange because I feel like his storytelling form usually has him going into quite a bit of depth, uh, but this it's just not happening in, in this volume. I'm definitely going to give volume, at least volume three another chance, or volume three a chance, because I have volumes. I read the first six issues of the run on uh, DC Universe uh, Infinite. And then I have volume two, three, and four. I'm at least going to give volume three a try. But I'm, I'm not... If that one doesn't hit for me either, I'm, I'm not going to spend any time on volume four. So I read the uh, official image timeline from... Uh, from last, I guess two years ago at this point. And um, so some of the stuff was interesting, uh, but I think just like from a presentation standpoint, uh, uh, the book was kind of a nightmare. Uh, the There was something weird about the font and it was all stretched because it was in these, the way it's set up is, is the timeline takes place on all these columns. 
Uh, they don't give enough information about each event to provide any context. It's basically just image pounding their chest about how they disrupted the comic industry. Um, which there's a uh, there's a documentary that I think kind of did it better. Um, the name of the documentary I forget, so I'll put it right here. Lots of typos. Uh, it just and then uh, to, to be honest, I think the original price was like eight dollars or something crazy. Uh, I, thankfully, I got it in a dollar bin, which it feels like an appropriate price for this. Um, it definitely was not an eight dollar value book. Uh, as an accountant, I really appreciate the fact that they probably spent less on this book than any other book that they've they've worked they've uh, put out yet charge the most for it. So, I mean, for $8, just spend $2 more and you can get a, a trade of one of the first volumes of any image series. So, I don't know. I, I, I didn't care for it. Uh, it. Some interesting info, but overall, just kind of fell flat. So, I read Void Rivals number seven, and uh, I liked... I liked it. Um, I don't know that I quite felt the, um, the urgency that was introduced last issue. Um, we get to see, um, we get to see, I, I don't know how to pronounce these, so, you know, correct me in the comments if you'd like, uh, Derek and Solia, uh, they're out in this wasteland that Der Derek, Derek has been there before, uh, and then we get introduced to Proximus. So uh, I, what I do like about Proximus, so I, I believe that that's him on the cover. And then in addition to that, it looks like he's going to be this big looming villain in the background, which I think that Kirkman will definitely have the ability to build that up and, and make it menacing um, instead of, you know, having a background villain that rarely shows up. Heartless. And so, uh, that one I gave three and a half stars this time. Most of the other Void Rivals books I've given four stars or four and a half, I think, on issue number six. Uh, I still, I, I have complete faith that it's gonna pick up a lot uh, with issue number eight. Uh, this was just a lot of introduction of the next arc and, and seeing where we're going. So, so I read Birds of Prey. Um, unfortunately, I, I, I thought that Romero was doing the interiors, but I think he just did the cover, uh, which it's a great cover. Uh, at the very least, I could display that. Um, it wasn't a bad book at all. Uh, I might consider picking up number eight. Um, but the... Uh, the interesting thing is, so first of all, it's fantastic Barbara Gordon content, right? Um, she's playing Oracle throughout the whole thing, even though she's Batgirl on the cover. Um, but she's playing Oracle and is awesome. Just the amount of coordinating and detective work and planning that she does is fantastic. It's, it's exactly what I want. And while I really like how Tom Taylor portrays Barbara Gordon and Dick together, Dick Grayson together, uh, in her, in her role as Oracle, I, I don't feel like Taylor makes her commanding enough or, or, um, you know, assertive enough. Whereas, uh, Thompson just, she, I think she gets Barbara Gordon. Uh, I would, I would love to see if we're going to get more Oracle in the upcoming issues of Birds of Prey, then I will most definitely be getting the rest of the issues. Obviously, Big Barda is awesome in this. Um, it was it was just a fun book. Uh, I, I mean, again, I think this is a little bit of setup. I think you probably need a little bit of context from the first arc. I might, uh, I might track down that trade. Um, we'll, we'll see. And... Um, but yeah, I mean, overall pretty good. I liked it. I think that what I'm going to read next is going to be 
a week in the library or one week in the library by W. Maxwell Prince uh, after I finished uh, Green Lantern. Uh, probably uh, The Many Deaths of Layla Starr. That's another one that I've got on my list. Mm, I've got some PKJ uh, action comics uh, on my shelf from the library. Uh, the Forgotten Man. Yeah, so I've got a lot of good reading to do. Um, and I, you know, I've got good pools. I've got good library books. I've got plenty of, uh, you know, books that I own on the shelves that I still need to get through. So I'm a, I'm a happy comic reader these days. All right, so that, I think that's all I have. Uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, definitely uh, comment on the video if, uh, if you have anything to say about any of the books I talk about or if you have any suggestions for videos or anything specific you want me to talk about. Uh, just definitely let me know down in the comments. Uh, also, again, please watch the, uh, the Night Thrasher video. Uh, I spent weeks researching and editing or filming and editing. Uh, and I, I feel like it turned out pretty well uh, from, from what I've heard from people. They're, uh, they're learning things that they didn't know about the character before. So uh, it's always cool to get to spotlight a, uh, a character that doesn't get a lot of mainstream attention. Uh, also, uh, at the end of that video, there are some interview questions for uh, Fabian Nasiza, uh, who's the main, basically the main kind of architect of Night Thrasher. Uh, he's not the, the original creator, but he wrote The New Warriors for years, and he wrote uh, Night Thrasher solo series, uh, including the Night Thrasher 4 Control Mini, which was probably the best Night Thrasher content out there. Uh, so definitely give that video a try and, um, thanks for watching.